first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Hey, I tell you what, to each, no doubt. Going out to the Washington as well as the rest of the tribal members of North America. Um, tonight, we got some good in- information for you. Before we get in, I'm going to put on my co-host, Brother L. You here? Greetings, God. How you doing? All right. I'm doing well, God. How you doing tonight? Doing very well. Very well. All right. Hey, I'll tell you, watch your tour east. Hey, I'll tell you, watch your east. All right. Hey, I tell you, watch it out east. Y'all know Princess Kadira is here, Queen. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Really impressive. All right. We're going to go in. And um, I think what we're going to get into is basically some of the information which that the Duke of Tears was just dropping on that single, him and um, Sister Selene, um, Selena of um, 10,000 Years, the Empress. Um, we're going to get into... Um, our Empress in the Washington, um, Empress Bodiasi Gaston Turner L. Bay, um, who actually, I guess you would say, bestowed the Crown Prince title upon Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, who later became known as Prince Hutan Tupac Bay, as well as also within the indigenous cosmic honorary order of Melchizedek, became known as Prop Melchizedek. Um, as a crown prince, if you ever do your research in the Webster Dictionary and you look up crown prince, a crown prince is actually an individual who is of royal status or standing and has the capability of forming his own providence. So hence, Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, crown prince of the Empire of Washington, D. Dr. in 2003, Going into 2004, formed what was known as the United Washington Dr. Munger. In 2004, we met with Joe Frederick, known as Frederick Joe Washington, or Washington, in Los Angeles, California, with also the Empress, Vidyasi, uh, Washington, Tonica Gaston Abbe, and we met with them in which that at the end of our meeting, 
the United Watch Toll was accepted as the first nation state of the Empire Watch Toll did that the Manya and under the principles of human rights, international law, and the declarations on the rights of indigenous people, we had um, the right to go forward in self-determination. Um, as a matter of fact, um, if you go into research, you will find out that um, you will trace that our lineage was beyond 400 years or so. You know, the period called the transatlantic or mid-Atlantic slave trade. We're still trying to find those ships in which that none of us, as far as scholars, have been able to find as of yet. And no right. so scholar has been yet to be able to tell us where they are. Right. We have gone to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. We have gone to the Museum of Natural History and Science in New York. We have gone to the British Museum in London. We have gone to the Lavoie in Paris, and none of these countries, which supposedly participated or allegedly participated in the slave trade, which we know their descendants did, the so-called Albions here in the Americas, um, as it is now known, who are, i.e., United States citizens. We, however, are not United States citizens, and I'll get into that in a minute. But we have not been able to find any documented proof of these travels. Mm -hmm. What we have been able to find has been notes taken or information put in the diary of Christopher Columbus and his son in which they detailed that they bought, as a matter of fact, this information is in um, Africans and um, Africans in America. Uh, which I'll get into that book in a second, uh, in which that states basically that the slave trade started from Christopher Columbus, taking back about 300 or so West Indians, as they refer to as, you know, of course, we you know the Carib or the Arawaks, you know, which was related to the Cherokee, which was um, the dominant. Um, tribe in the southern region, in which I was part of the five civilized tribes. You had the Choctaw, which is Washita, the Chickasaw, the Creek, which is the Muscogee, the Seminole, and the Cherokee. Those are known as the five civilized tribes. If you get the Camp Holmes Treaty, or the Treaty of Camp Holmes, you will see that we all band together in treaty as the Wichita Nations or the Washington Nation. Um, and thus, we are now unified today in that regard um, amongst the Moors in that, you know, who, at least those who recognize indigenous aboriginal uh, connections. All right. Now, when we go into the tracing, we know that in school, we were told in the United States educational system that we said blacks were all slaves. At least that is the impression that we were left with. Nevertheless, historically, by the ratification of the Constitution in 1788, there were at least more, there was less than actually more than 50,000 slaves in the Americas. The vast majority of them actually were Albion, in particular Irish. Hmm. And that's what is not being said. This is why um, the Irish people was known as the Green Nicky. And this is shown in Irish Jam, in which that was done by Eddie Griffin in that movie. All right? Now, here's some documented proof. Let's go into it. History of America Before Columbus by Peter D. Rowe. He states in the URL Atiket origin of our aborigines. Page 307. This is what he says. American Negro nation like of which there were many as was made as we may see in Riffinique's account of the African black the ancient black nations of America. This is what he referred to as now the ancient black nations of America. 
All right. So when the Albion tried to say that he don't recognize the Moorish nation, historically we're recognized. Here it is. And this is what he says. Such as the Corora of Brazil, the Black Caribbean of St. Vincent in the Gulf of Mexico, the Yamasee of Florida, the dark complected Californians, we are perhaps the dark men mentioned in the Kwashi traditions, which is of the Mayan, by some old Spanish adventures. This is what it said now. The ancient black nations of America. Mm-hmm. It goes further to say types of American aborigines. Horn, gratis, and other high authorities admit that our continent have received part of its population from southern land, Australia and Australasia, and Natalaka. Recognize Melanesian features on some of our aboriginal tribes. I treat I treating of the traditions of the civilized tribes of America, said Hudson. Now this is what goes on. He says that Alabama State, now this is it, this is recently, this is what happened with the senator coming from out of Alabama, um, Senator Scott Beeson, all right, he's a actual represent, um, he's a representative, um, not a representative, but a Republican. This is in a FBI recorded conversation. Beeson and others are discussing the distressing, the distress economics of Green County, home to Green Tracks. This is what the, this is what they say. This is what Green Tracks say now. They, they all Indian, said former state um, representative Benjamin Lewis. All right, Beasy comes back and say. They're Aborigines, but they're not Indians. Now, who are you talking about? Who are these ancient black nations of the Americas? I'm only using the word black because this is what it says in the article, so please don't get distressed about that. This right. is what they refer to as that. But the senator comes out of his mouth out of Alabama and says that we are Aborigines. And not Indian. Now let's continue on. In West American History, Volume 1, by Herbert Howell Bannercraft, he states the, ab- the, inhabitant, the inhabitants of the tablelands are the various hues. Some are olive, some brown, others are red copper color. In the Sahara, some have a bluish tint as if dyed with indigo. The natives of the Tierras, Salinas, are of a darker complexion, inclined in to black. They are some called they are some called Indian Pintos, whose cuticles is of a less dark deep color, inclining more to a yellowish or marked with dark copper colored spots. Now, that was in West American history. That was in that history book. West American history, volume one. So they're not talking about in Africa, these dark skin complexions inclined to black and so forth. This is here in the Americas. Now, go to Webster's Universal Dictionary, 1937 edition. They define American as an aboriginal or one of the various copper-colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of European settlers. Exactly. The following yeah. is the original applications of the name Maru. Of the name Maru. Now, for those who don't know what Maru means, the word Maru is where you get the word Amuru or Amaru, which is the, which is if you add ka onto it, which means spirit, 
from the ancient Kemetic teaching is become Amuraka, Amarika. And this is found in the Metu Netu, the hieroglyphics. And the word Meru or Amaru or Meru means guardian. Guardian. Now, if you read in the teachings of the Patahotep, the oldest book in the world by Asa G. Hilliard, the third, um, Larry Williams and Nia Damali, editors, it says also in E.A. Wallace Budgie's book, Egyptian Hieroglyphics, that there's a still in which that dates back to 2500 BC and um, through 2400 BCE. Palomo still, and the words Maru is spelled more, or M A U R. And it means high priest of and new, which is Ra. And is the root of the English transliteration America. Meaning the land of the immortals, the land of the immortals. The word Amaru within the Incas text also means serpents. So this means that this is the land of the serpents or the land of the Nagas, who are the immortals. Now, this is in the book called The Returns of the Serpents of Wisdom, written by Mark Amaru <coughs> Pink. In fact, the word American. Middle, more, or more, or have the same word origin. Thus, American is a proper noun and is actually our nationality. This is why we are Moorish American. More specifically, Washington is our tribal identification, and more itself typically is our ethnicity. Now, check this out. In the Black Slow Dictionary, 4th edition, the word nation. Let's explain this. If you refer to it as American Negro, um, the ancient American Negro um, people, all right, or nation. The word nation means a people of men existing in form of a organized, jurial society. Usually a distinct speaking to the same language, using the same customs, process, possessing the historical continuity and distinguished from other like groups by their racial origin and characteristics and generally, but not necessarily, live under the same government and sovereignty. All right? Now, you go to Black Slow Dictionary 4th Edition, go to nationality, it means that quality or character which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. Nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines the civic or the civil status. Nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. Now, your nationality is by birth because you were born here from the oldest people on the planet in the Americas. Now, naturalization means that you have to come back in tune with nature. That means you're out of tune with nature. The Albion was out of tune and he was not originally from the Americas, so thus he has to be naturalized. All right? Nationality is also used as opposed to territoriality for the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. Example, the Jews. Now, this is why the Jews had to run throughout Africa and then finally settle within Canaan or what is now known as Jerusalem or Israel. But they first tried to set up settlement there in the 1940s in Uganda and get ran up from out of Africa. So they are looking for a history in order to tie themselves onto. We don't have to look for a history to tie ourselves onto because we are the original people of the planet. Or we are global people. Now, check this out. The word Washita was, um, um, we are known as Moors. Now, the word Moor or Moors is embedded inside the definition of land. Thus, they are synonymous. As a matter of fact, you go to um, the Holy Bible, Genesis, the second chapter, the seventh verse. It says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. 
Now, the King James Version used the expression dust of the ground, and dust from the word Hebrew means Ephraim. Ephra. Meaning dry earth, dust, powder, ashes, earth, or ground. All right? Or either mortar or rubbish or ground itself. Now, ground from the Hebrew word is Adama for the word Adam, meaning ground or land. So when you look up the word land within the Black Law Dictionary for tradition, it says, in the most general sense, comprehends any soil or earth whatsoever, any fields, meadows, pastures, woods, moors. Mm-hmm. So the word land and moors are synonymous. And then it also, right next to the word moors, is the word waters. So waters, moors, and land are synonymous. Thus, land is the foundation of nationality, and the name moor symbolizes the birth, right, tie, or heritage. In international law, those labels, Negro, Blacks, and Colored, in the said United States of America are listed actually as stateless or i.e. nationless, hence landless. So as long as we're using the terms Negro, Blacks, and Colored, we are landless, and hence, not tied to the land, and therefore, um, as you hear in the definition, the word moors is embedded inside of it. The word black, negro, and colors is not embedded inside of the word more, um, embedded inside of the, um, of the definition of land. Okay? Now, there's another good book. It's called The African Roots of Humanity and Civilization by Renoko Rashid. He says the Africans, the first people on the earth, and gave birth to or significantly influenced the world's oldest and most magnificent civilization. This is the African that first entered Asia, Europe, Australia, South Pacific, and early Americas, not as slaves, but as masters. We now know, based on recent scientific studies of DNA, which modern human originated, that modern human originated in Africa, and the black people are the world's original people. And all moderate humans can ultimately trace their ancestral roots back to Africa. Now, in another good book, Signs and Symbols of the Primordial Man, it states that the pygmy, all right, which actually are the Twa or the Tawhites or the Anu people, are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. Right, you go to Science American Magazine, June 5th, 1852. I'm just going through these books and articles because people always ask me, well, What proof do you have? Well, I'm giving it. Scientific American Magazine, June 5th, 1852, contains a report about a blasting carried out at Meeting Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts, which is here in the Americas, northern um, upstate North America. A blasted gourd, tons of rocks described by the U.S. Geological Survey as pudding stone dating back over 600 million years old. A bell, yeah, 600 million. A bell shaped metallic vessel was blown out of the rock that was about four inches high and was carved and covered with exquisite carving, writing. This indicates the presence of artistic metal workers dating back over 600 million years ago. So if the Twa people are the oldest people on the face of the planet, and they were smelting metal, iron, over 600 million years ago, God damn them up. So here it is. God and spacemen. And this is another book. Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West by Raymond Drake. He states that the pygmies inhibited Earth for 30 million years. So he goes back to at least 30 million years. Huh. All right? This is Raymond Drake in his book, Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West. Another good book, The Children of Moon, written by James Churchward, the brother of Albert Churchward, who wrote the primordial symbols, the signs of men. He states that the pygmies lived in Lemuria 
which is today known as the Hawaiian Islands, two million years ago. Mm. But we know at least that here in the Western Hemisphere, we had metal working 600 million years ago. The Twa people, the Pygmy, now in the Hawaiian Islands, was there at least two million years ago. And this is all in the Western Hemisphere. And remember, it was in a book called Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West. Where's the West at? Here in the Americas. Raymond Drake states that the Pygmies were here at least 30 million years ago. So he has 600 million, 30 million, 2 million years ago, which all predates what they have found in Africa. Not saying mm-hmm. that we did not come from Africa. I'm just saying that we came here much earlier than what is being told to us from out of the interior of Africa because there's also a book called Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Creedmoor and Richard L. Thompson where they state that 2.8 billion years ago they found proof of these orbs in which that has writing at the equator. In which that dates back 2.8 billion years ago coming from out of South Africa. So we know that we do come from the interior of Africa and we spread it out. But we was already here before the continental drift because 600 million years was 400 million years before the continental drift according to scientists. Hmm. Scientists claim that the continental drift occurred 2 million years, 200 million years ago, approximately. Now, Prophet Noble Jali already told us that before the Great Continental Drift, before the Great Atlantic Ocean, or Atlantis as he referred to it as, when the continents were together called Mu or Pangaea, we was already here. So we verify what Prophet Noble Jali states, that we was already here, because this goes back to 600 million years ago, 400 million years before the Continental Drift. Now, the earliest people in the Americas were the people of the Negrito, or the Negret, um, African race, people similar to the Pygmies, the Twa, the Octa of the Philippines, the Red Dwarfs of the prehistorical um, Ireland, um, and the Blacks of China. And you can see this, it's called Af- um, African Presence in Early Americas by Ivan Varn Sertima. That's what he writes. It was also um, um, edited and um, information was added in it from Renoko Rashidi, who's one of his students. Now, in another book, What They Never Told You in History Class, Indu Kemet Kush, he says the first Americans were black. Now, let me keep going, because there's a lot of information here. Yeah. To be um be able to deny. In another book called The Study Archaeology of Ethnic um, of Ethnicity of Mexico. This is written by C. C. McQuees, a Latin scholar. And he says the strong possibilities that the black people were the first people in America out of which later came the red race, once again. Strong possibility that black people were the first people in America out of which later came the red race. It is likely that we repeat the long ago that youthful America was also a Negro continent and that the Ottomans of Mexico, the Corolla or Corolla um, or Caraco of Haiti, the Matanya of Brazil, and the Albino of Panama or the remains of the aboriginal Negro race out of which later developed what is known as the red race and it's Indians. So he's saying that so called blacks were already here before them and they and the so called red race as they refer to Indians came out of us. Now this is verified in many Indian tribes in which that will tell you the truth about this matter. Very few because they now receive the money from the federal government and they want 
got money to keep coming in, so they'll hide that fact. But for those in which are not having, you know, do not have casinos and uh, want to tell the truth and actually unify and bring this thing um, together, then they will tell you the truth that we come from you. All right? And mm-hmm. any and everyone on the planet with common sense will have to tell that, that truth. The Chinese recently have told that truth in an article in which that came from out of Hong Kong, in which that there was a scientist, in which that says that the Chinese people come from out of, comes from Africa, from African people. Mm. All right? Now, there's another article. I'm going through all the articles because no one can ever say this nonsense again about who's the original or aboriginal or the most indigenous people of North America, Central America, South America, or the adjoining islands. We have that all over the planet. Now, according to the Earth Waves, the newsletter of the Sojourner Truth Farm School, August 1995, reprinted in the Freedom Press newsletter, spring 1996, the Washington were and still is a nation who existed in the southern United States and Mississippi Valley region long before the 16th century Europeans arrived and even before there were Native Americans, the so-called red man, on the land the Washita once occupied and still occupy today. Indigenous people have been all over the world and particularly on the North American continent for hundreds and thousands of years. Their land, the lands of all the earth, were known by the indigenous term Mu. All right? Now, we know that Prophet Noble Drali um, told us this also in the oral on traditions and prophecies where he states that before the Europeans came, there was Moors living up and down the Mississippi. Who's these Moors living up and down the Mississippi, which is the, the southern United States and the Mississippi Valley region as what was just read here in this article. It was the Washita. It was the Moors. Or the Moors right. as the Choctaw today. So this correlates and verifies the teachings of Prophet Noble Jolly once again. Here, according to the book Susa Economics, the history of Pan African trade, commerce, money, and wealth, these blacks found in the Americas, which is the first book library states, scholars, which is actually African Search Mill, in which they wrote the book they came before Columbus, or search that the Egyptians and Nubians came to Mexico in a pre colombial pre Columbian period. They they they, they did back twelve hundred B C. So before Christ, twelve hundred years before Christ, the Egyptians and Nubians were already in Mexico. Now, this has been verified to us when we went to Mexico just back in March. We had a tour guide who was a historian, an archaeologist, anthropologist, PhD, who told us specifically that it was the Egyptians and the Nubians that founded the Mexican, or what now is known as the Mexican civilization. And he referred to them as the Omecs or the Omecas. That's where the word Mexico comes from. It's from the word Omeca. Mm-hmm. Mecca as in Mexico. But he said that came through the Egyptian and Kushite or Nubians. Now we know that Prophet Noble Jali once again referred to these Egyptians and Nubians within the 47th chapter as being that the capital of the dominion is Egypt. And he also referred to them as Old Man Kush. Hence the Kushites, which are the Nubians or the Sudanese, once again. Mm-hmm. Now, this is what the article goes on to say. That the um, Nurer, the Dinkas, the Nubas, or the remnants of a once powerful Kushite empire. Now, once again, now here it is. It was a powerful Kushite empire. So this Kushite empire spread it here in the Americas. And it says that included Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt, Somalia. Both the Nur and the Nuba show cultural and racial 
characteristics that are also found in Omec statues and sculptures. These include lip plugs, keloid tattoos along with the forehead, keloid tattoos along the chin, and above the um, lip, cornrows. Now, the cultures of the Dinkas, Nuba, Nur, Nubians, Kemites, which are the Egyptians, spread it to West Africa in ancient times as migration from Sudan and South Egypt occurred over a period of time when of evil occurred. Later on in history, we find them to be known as the Mound Builders, hence all the Pyramid Builders. They were dark-skinned, woolly-haired blacks who were indigenous to North America and kin to the Omex of South America. The Omex and Washita, Black Californians, Yamases, California, and other pre-colonial or pre-Columbian, excuse me, blacks of the Americas were part of a prehistoric network that began in Africa and spread it worldwide over 100,000 years in wow. various periods afterwards. And at various periods afterwards, apart from the blacks who settled in Asia and Australia from prehist- prehistoric Africa, there was a number of tribes and nations right here in the United States and the Americas, such as the Washington Nation, the afro um, Deratni or Deratnite, the Choco region blacks of Colombia, the Garifuni or Carifuna, who are of pre Columbian and prehistoric origin. The Washington Nation built the first empire. Once again, the Washington Nation. Now, this is coming from that book, Susa Economics. Now, the Washington Nation built the first empire in the southern United States and the Mississippi Valley and once owned the entire Louisiana Purchase Territories, which was annexed. Recently, in 1991, the United States returned about 70,000 square acres after the Washita won in a court battle. The Washita Nations was a great civilization of pyramid and mound builders. In other words, they were the Egyptians, the Nubians, or what is known as part of Old Man Kush. It says the Washington Nation was a great civilization of pyramid builders, pyramid and mound builders, who had a maritime civilization and trade with Africa before Columbus. That's what it says now. Get the book. If you don't believe me, check it out. I'm giving you all the references. Right. So don't be coming to me, ask me dumbass questions <laughs> concerning anything until you first do your research and study. Then come to me and ask me in te- an intelligent question about historical, um, about us being here. Now, blacks own miles. Check this out now. Blacks also own miles of U.S. pre-Columbian land. Now, this is an article, once again, written by Paul Barton. He states that in 1991, the United States returned about 68,883 acres of land, square acres of land, to the Washington nations of Louisiana, one of the prehistoric black nations of the United States. This group of blacks is the evidence of black ownership of land and the black presence before English and Spanish French colonialization of North America. Many blacks living today are descendants from the pre Columbian. Once again, check this out now. Many blacks living today are descendants from the pre Columbian black nations. And it is time. That issues is included in the reparation discussion. Yes, they shall locate who are the descendants of these pre-Columbian of uh, African nations in the United States. Perhaps the entire mix African American population, since most of these black tribes were enslaved and shipped to plantations and mixed with blacks from Africa. So what happened to the Omex as they moved here into the interior from out of South Africa? From South America into Central America into North America, it says perhaps the entire mixed African American population, since most of these black tribes were enslaved and shipped to plantations and mixed with blacks from Africa. So, 
it wasn't about the blacks who came from Africa. It was about the blacks who was already here. Because we know that even according to um, historical information, we know that less than 50,000, um, as they say, or less than, actually, wait, you get the, let's, let's, let's do this right. Let's, let's go to what they call Emory University um, information, because out of the land of Georgia, out of Georgia there. They stated that less than 650,000 Africans came here to North America. All right? Less than 650,000. Now, with the European hmm. first here, it is reported that there was over 100 million of us already here. And so they come up with the idea of genocide. Once again, nothing has changed. And they put smallpox on blankets in which that killed off over 25 million of us. Okay, all the way from Alaska down to Peru. All right? Now, in order to say that we came from Africa... They brought some Africans here and mixed them in with that remained in population in which they could not kill off because we built up a resistance and a tolerance to the small population. All right? And thus they were able to say that we come from Africa. All of you come from Africa. Yes, we do, but um, however, I didn't come from there 400 years ago. What about 100,000 years? What about 2 million years? What about 30 million years? What about 600 million years? Which one did I come from? Which impact? I'll be honest, stop playing. You left enough breadcrumbs where we can figure this shit out. In another article here, it goes on. It says the French, the Spanish had documentation of the Black Washington tribe who once owned much of the Annex Louisiana Territory. In fact, the Black, um, the Washington Nation regards the state of Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Mississippi as Washington proper. And at and as of this very moment, the Washington Nation is recognized by the nations around the world as one of the most ancient nations in the Americas. You can go to www.hotep.org or our website, www.drlinelbey.com. According to the settled in the Missis- um, according to the present leadership of the Washington Empire, the Washington are the descendants of prehistoric Africans who settled in the Mississippi Valley region and the southern United States thousands of years before Christ. They were boat builders, builders of pyramids, mounds, and these seafarers practiced agriculture. And according to another article, www.wanoline.com, that's W-A-N-O-L-I-N-E.com, you see um, another book, we are the Washita. Now we are the Washita. This is written by um, Umar Shabazz Bay. He states the Washita originally came from Africa and were African. So we're not saying that we did not come from Africa, and that we're not saying that we are not Africans. Um, however, we're not from 400 years ago. The Albion didn't have the technology then. He does not have the technology now to bring millions of us here. What he did is what we just finished talked about, and that was enslaved the people who was here and moved them from plantation to plantation and separated their bloodline. And then um, instructed them that they just came into knowledge of self or that they just came from Africa. Hmm. All right? This is what happened. That we, that we just came to the knowledge of, of us coming, in other words, um, we did not come from here. We came from Africa. So he, does, he was able to steal the land. That's how that happened. So we are Washtor. In the book, it says Washtor originally came from Africa and were Africans. Washtor are still African Negritic 
people, and they, like many of the ancient blacks who lived in the Americas, became victim of the papal edicts that opened the way, this is the Pope's rights or writs, that opened the way for the colonialization of the New Americas and to take people into slavery and occupation of their lands. The Washita, later known as the Adena Indians, built hundreds of earthen pyramid mounds all in the southern and maybe western parts of the United States, actually throughout the whole United States, all the way from Canada um, down to Peru, parts of the United States. And some, such as the mounds at Poverty Point in Louisiana, is one of the most sacred sites of the Washita. Skeletons found in Washita grave sites from the pre-Columbian period shows a tall people with characteristics similar to African. Now, you can get that information from another book called Ancient, um, a magazine called Ancient um, America. Ancient America Magazine. Um, editor is Frank Joseph. And another book called by David um, Stander. It says, American Holocaust. Colum- um, Columbus and the Conquest of the New World, page 119 to 120. He states this, America. The oldest civilization known in the Americas was the Omex, and it was of the black Africoid origin and flourished over a 5,000-year period. This civilization mm-hmm. existed in the Americas before the arrival of the Red Indian. Once again, this civilization existed in the Americas before the arrival of the Red Indians. In fact, at the time of the European arrival in Central South America in the 1500s, these sense of the black Omex were abounding throughout the region, particularly in Mexico. In this regard, the black people were the original people of Mexico. Now, this is in another book by um, called The History of Mexico. And he goes on, this is written by um, Nicholas Leon. This is what he says. The almost extinction of the original Negroes during the time period of the Spanish conquest and the memories of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negroes were the first inhabitants of Mexico. Mm. Now let's go on to another article. Look, th- that's what I'm doing tonight is just dropping articles. We don't even got to get into no real discussion. Okay. <laughs> ancient American Magazine reports evidence for black-skinned natives in the Americas long before the arrival of Columbus is abundant. As you can hear, I've just dropped abundantly, I should have just made it abundantly clear. From the distinctively Negroid features of the Colossus Olmec sculptured head and a pre-Aztec Abyssinian bowl being upheld by a figure that unmistakable black characteristics to the bones of the Negroid peoples or persons excavated from a 2,000-year-old mound in Northern Wisconsin, a wealth of material exists to establish that certainty of non-white, non-Indian populations lived in pre-Columbian America along with these other groups. And matter of fact, through some, um, so um, thus, through so many mounds have been deliberately destroyed. Over two hundred thousand ancient mounds and huge mounds of earth in the shape of cones, animals. Geometrical designs can still be found from the southern coast of America to Canada, as I made mention of. These sculptures were built by a so-called obscured people, largely known as the Mound Builders. Hence the Washita. Continue on. According to John Herrick Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, if one knows who that is, for those who are into the Afrocentricity, black power, you know who John Henry Clark is, but he says in the Africans, Christopher Columbus, and the myth of the New World. The myth of the New World. Once again, the myth of the New World. He writes, it must also be added that America Van Spusky on his voyage to the Americas witnessed the Mandingos of Mali and the Songhai Empire, later identified as the Moroccan Empire, Mm. out in the Atlantic, returning to Africa. Where was this at? 
It was in the Atlantic returning to Africa. From where? From the Americas. And he called them the Malian, the Mandingo Malian, and the Songhai Empire. And he called them, later identified as the Moroccan Empire. Prophet Noble Drali refers to them as this also, does he not? Yes, sir. Who are we, brother? Watch it up, boys. Are we? Based on the 101 and the 102s, we are the Moroccans. So we are the Mandingos or the Songhai Malian people known as the Omex or the Kushites or the Egyptians. All of this is one and the same people of the Moroccan Empire. In another article, African Explorers of the New World by Harold G. Lawrence, he goes on to say, we can now positively state that the Mandingos of Mali and the Songhai Empires and possibly other Africans crossed the Atlantic to carry on trade with the Western Hemisphere Indians and further succeeded in establishing colonies throughout the Americas. Mm-hmm. Further succeeded in establishing colonies throughout the Americas. Yes, sir. All right, so, and he goes on further to say that this is the second impact on America. Well, this is the second impact in which that he speaks of. I spoke of several impacts, the first being 600 million years ago, then 30 million years ago. Then 2 million years ago, then 100,000 years ago, okay? So we have had several impacts, and to continue on, because we got down to 5,000 years ago with the Omex. But from 600 million years ago down to the 5,000 years ago, all of them was the same people. Africans, Amexians, which is the word Omec. That's what the word Omex comes from. Mexican, Amexum, Omex, Omeca, all of that have the same roots. It's talking about the same people. The same Moroccans, or of the Moroccan Empire. So the Moroccan Empire didn't just stay within the kingdom of Morocco, which is there um, as we now see on the African continent. But the Moroccan Empire was the whole damn thing. The whole dominion. And the capital of the Moroccan Empire was Egypt. Hence, that means that the ancient Egyptian mystery school spread it throughout the whole world. And we had the same teachings here in the Americas of the ancient Egyptian mystery school. Matter of fact, the Cherokee, which is the Chickakoi or the Iroquois in the Algonquins, they spoke Arabic, Hebrew, and Metunet. This is a fact. This is a fact. There's another article in which that goes into this, but we'll hold on. We'll get into that in a second. Let's go to the Black Slow Dictionary 7 edition and look up the word natural person. It states that a natural person is indigenous, native. The original or natural inhabitants of a country. So the Albion is not natural to anywhere on the on the planet. No. He's not indigenous to anywhere on the planet. He's not native to anywhere on the planet. He knows he's an artificial entity. This is why he has a result for artificial form. <laughs> and everything artificial, you have to be in an artificial state. Or status, call an artificial entity or corporation. And then you have to be put under colorable law. Because he's not natural. You won't need a, another fictitious law, de facto law, in order to observe the jure or natural law if you was not dealing from a artificial means. What's the dictionary 
Once the student dictionary, International Encyclopedia Edition states, the word native is born or produced in a region or country in which that one lived, indigenous, of or pertaining to one's birth, to the place or circumstance, natural rather than acquired, and of or pertaining to original inhabitants usually apply to non-European peoples. It says it's right there. So, not original, not indigenous, not native. To non-European people. Who's the most non-European people that you know of, brother? <laughs> huh? Non-European people? Right. Uh, uh, plenty. Plenty exactly. of uh, us. Uh, us for one. Exactly. exactly. But uh, uh, the young Chinese lady I met told you about another one. Right. The uh, the Native uh, Americans, Samoa. Mm-hmm. Mexican Samoa. Right. Malaysian Samoa. Mm-hmm. Japanese, mm-hmm. Thais. Right. Vietnamese. And all the more. And all of them are our children. As we yes, are the sir. oldest, most indigenous people, most ancient people on the place on the face of the planet. We are the original. Aboriginal. No doubt. Mm-hmm. You are the native. You are the indigenous. All right? That's my indigenous from the sense of um genealogy. In other words, what is encoded inside of our genes, what's inside mm-hmm. of our genes, our lineage, our blood, indigenous. Mm-hmm. Now, the Washington also listed at the United Nations under the Indigenous People Project, later known or renamed as the Indigenous People's Organization, number 21593. Um, the Empress in 1993 um, got the seat number under the um, Economic and Social Council um, of seat 215, meaning that the seat number for the United um, for the Washington at the United Nations um, was effective, all right, in 1993 or in the year 1993, and that seat number 215 was our seat number. And according to international law, the Washington has established itself as a sovereign, independent nation, all right? And um, you can get yeah. that United Nations, NIS-21, um, right, slash 593, apart from the corporate from the corporate United States of 1781 and corporate United States of 1787. The land claim of the Washington has been affirmed by Spain and France as well as Britain, uh, pursuant to a Spanish land grant of 1762 and 1795. Now, if you don't believe me, you can go to the court cases, the United States versus the heirs of Henry Turner, case 32, United States Appellate Court, in 1850, and was an appeal to an earlier case, won by the heirs of Henry Turner, all right, called the heirs of Henry Tur- of, um, of Turner versus United States, case 193 in 1848. Hmm. In other words, on June 6th, all right, just four days ago of 1848, a Supreme Court decision read by Judge Theo H. McLeod, McLeod, um, declared that the United States does not own the land of the ancient ones, known as the Mount Britons of North America, the Washington. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, you can read these two United States Supreme Court cases um, at supreme.justia.com, right slash US, right slash 52, right slash 663, right slash. So that's S U P R E M E dot J U S T I A dot. C O M right slash U S right slash five two right slash six six three right slash and supreme dot J U S T I A dot C O M right slash U S right slash four four right slash seven seven three right slash case C A S E dot H T M L right the um, Supreme Court found that the neutral land, which is actually um, almost approximately 3 million acres actually of the United States, in which that the court declared that the lawful land owners are the heirs of the Washington Moors. Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Now, let, let me let me um explain this. Because many people um have been lying on the Washington. Um, all right, we are not United States citizens and can never be. No. All right, Dress Scott versus Sanford, nineteen, H O W, dot three nine three, states otherwise that we are not U.S. citizens. So-called Africans and Negroes of African descent cannot be U.S. citizens, nor will ever be. Now, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, second edition, look up the word citizen, and it states all natives are not citizens of the United States. Now, who did I make mention of? Who's the natives? We are the natives. And it says the descendant of the aborigines. Who's the aborigines? We're the aborigines. And those of African origin are not entitled to the rights of citizens. That's good, because now the United States is nothing more than the 40-mile radius of Washington, D.C. Hence, yeah. federalized people. All right? Do we want to be federalized? No. No. Mm-hmm. So it says right here, all natives are not citizens of the United States, the descendants of the aborigines, and those of African origin are not entitled to the rights of citizens. So we are not U.S. citizens. This is the ploy that they have given and have done to us in order to put us under that artificial status. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Constitution, it goes on further, that the Constitution does not authorize but any but white persons to be citizens of the United States, and it must therefore be presumed that no one is a citizen who is not white. Therefore, it is more different between citizenship and heritage. We are heritage. We are bound by this, con- by this to this continent by heritage. This is stated within the FEMA um, memo, in which that actually derived from the King Alfred plan, known as Rex 84. It stated specifically that the so-called minorities, in reference to us, which were not minorities, are actually bound to this continent by heritage. Yeah. And that um, we know that we and we will be a formidable opponent because we will know that we cannot seek asylum into other countries because we're from here. In other words, we would just have to whoop their ass to the very last drop. <laughs> That's right. If it came down to it. That's what that means. That's right. All right? Now, look up the word indigenous. Is an adjective and it says originating in and characteristics of a particular region or country, native. Right? That's what it right. says. Now, the word origin of indigenous this is what it says native, original inhabitants. NDG means native or original inhabitants. ND means in, and gen means derived from or bring into being, genital or genitor. So, the word indigenous means the original inhabitants who brings into existence other original inhabitants. Matter of fact, it says that the synonym is aboriginal, natural, and uncatonctious. Now, United Nations Declaration of Indigenous States those people have an historical continuity with pre-invasions and pre-colonial societies consider themselves distinct from other sectors of the society now prevailing in those territories or parts of them. They form at present a non-dominant sector of society and are determined to preserve, develop, and transmit to future generations their ancestral territories and their ethnic identity as the basis of their continued existence as the people in accordance with their own cultural patterns, social institutions, and legal systems. Right? Now, understand, I'm not saying all this um, in order to um, get anyone upset, you know, but, I mean, we are non-combative. However, we want our rights to be recognized, and we want to be, um, we want our human rights. 
right? Right, exactly. You know, in other words, we can do it peacefully. We don't mind that. You know, we can put aside contracts and things in which that needs to be done. Then that is definitely something in which that we need to do because we're non combative. You know, we'd rather not fight. We rather right. utilize our minds, our intellect, and reasoning. You know, however, as I was talking with a brother today, sometimes it's kind of hard to reason with psychopaths. Yeah, it is. In fact, in fact, there's almost no way to reason with a psychopath because they have no emotions. You know, so it would have to be someone, you know, um, who has some type of soul. In other words, who have developed a soul in which that we will have to um, connect with, all right? In other words, we see that Obama in December the 10th, 2010, signed on, the United States signed on to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Yeah. And I get into that in a second. But in the Inter-American Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, this is what the definition of indigenous people means. In this declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territories by Europeans, as well as peoples brought involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. Now, look at that. So you have those who was here, number one, Historical continuity with society which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territories by Europeans. So anyone who was here prior to the Europeans, as I've already stated, which was us, and all of the information that we've been stating. Now, this is also for those who say that they just came from Africa. It says, as well as those people brought involuntarily to the New World who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. So even if you say that you was here prior to the European, or if you just came after the Europeans got here and came along the so-called um, mid-Atlantic slave trade, you are still classified as indigenous in this definition based on the Inter-American <laughs> Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. So there is no battle between the Moors and the so-called Black Power movement right. and all that other stuff. This is all made up in your minds because right. you have egos and you want to claim that you are the only one in which that is right and exact. When you don't exactly. know shit, that's the problem. Many don't right. know shit. They just talking and trying to get out in the limelight and not doing their research. I don't know a damn thing. This is why we doing our research because we're able to bring this information back to you. And you and please show me another show in which that has this much in depth information. I haven't heard and seen it yet, unless I haven't either. Or unless one of my brothers are on it, or either. Um, someone from our camp is on it. I have not seen it or heard it. Very few, if any. So this information is something to which that we need to start paying attention to. Here in the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, this is what it says. All right? It says in Article 6 that indigenous people have the right to a nationality. It says we have the right to a nationality, brother. Exactly. So that means that as, as indigenous people, if you don't have a nationality, our nationality is Washington Moors. But if you don't have that nationality, then what are you? You're still labeled as Negro, Black, and Color, which is three fifths of a human being based on the Article One, Section Two of the Constitution. And if you are all right with that, then I guess that is fine. <laughs> if you want to be classified as such, that is fine. No problem. You hear nothing else from me concerning it. <laughs> okay? You hear nothing else from me concerning it. If you're happy with that. You love the three fifth status, being a subhuman, dehumanized as such, brutalized as such, shut um shot down fifty times as such. Called off the prison, mass prison camps, concentration That's camps, all. detention camps, or centers as such. Now the population of the prisons has reached up to 65% of us in there. Two million males 
one million females, so three million of us in prison. And that's not talking about those in which that probation, parole. That's on them. Right. If you're happy with that, then be my guest. Halfway at it. Happy with the 14th Amendment. Right. You're happy with the 14th Amendment and what they've done for you. Be my guest. And speaking of the 14th Amendment, based on our information, brother, it was never ratified. No. Anything after the 10th Amendment was never ratified. Exactly. It was never fully ratified. So that means there is no 14th Amendment for you so-called Negro citizens. No. Meaning, once again, you're not a U.S. citizen because the 14th Amendment was never rat- fully ratified. It's an illusion. That's but all. it's a loophole in which that gives you the ability in order so when you wake up, you'll be able to claim your own. And that would be continuously dependent upon another system. A de facto system at that. You need a de jure government. This is why there's two seals on that dollar bill. The pyramid is what you're supposed to be claiming is yours. However, you're under the eagle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're under de facto, colorable law. And you need to be under de jure, natural law. Real law. And that's under real law. That's under the pyramid. The Great Seal. This is why the de facto have never sealed any document with the pyramid. They claim it's not always, enough room. <laughs> right. They, they always use the eagle. Now, all this information in which I'm talking about is found within my book. All right? Within my book, The First World Order. For those who have never gotten it or yeah. read it or gotten a chance to get this book. I go into details about this information that I'm talking about right now. If you think that this is deep and you heard something that you never heard before, wait till you get the book. Wait till you get That's the book. Right. I can bear okay. witness. You know, so this is the uh, real information here, you know, and this is something which that cannot be skipped. You cannot skip this. All right? Um, we have the phone lines here, brother. Um, L, I'm okay. getting ready to go through it. This is another right. that is, um, um, let me see here. L. Gray, um, this is area code 111. Of course, this means that it's an out of country number. All right. Um, let me see here. For some reason, come on. Here we go with these technical problems again. Every time we go deep, yeah, it's every deep. time. <laughs> every time we go deep, we get them, brother. Oh wow! Peace, peace. Oh wow! God, yeah, I tell you what, it's yeah, you told each brother noble uh-huh. car. That's you. Uh huh. I tell you what, it's all each, bro. Desire noble. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you dropping. I hear you dropping jewels. Now, um, what we have to do is is make a connection for them. There's a right. reason why and a purpose that the so-called Black Panthers Party in the 60s used the symbol and the animal of a Black Panther. Right. When you're dealing with Washington, you have the Panther clan. Right. So Jack- you, have to, you, have to tie, yeah, you have to tie that in. And also down there in the Miccosukee, which became known as Florida, you also have a Panther Mound down there. That's the reason why the NFL and them came out with one of the 31st or 32nd team with the Jaguar, uh, the the Jacksonville Jaguar, you know, why? because we had the Jaguar claim. So we have to tie the knots for them. They're on the right path. They're on the right path, but the only part that they're missing is the nationality part. That's right. Um, just like we were speaking, or you were speaking previously, when you were talking about the Sudanic Empire, dealing right. with Sungai and, and all that there, where you have the flag that Moses Moshe Gobi came over with, which was dealing with the red, black, and green. 
You see, that was one of our flags inside of the empire. We had many flags within the empire after we had the keloids and tattoos and everything. That was our first flag before we started using materials as flags, you see. And um, I actually posted that a couple of weeks back saying that our first identification was dealing with tribal scars and tribal tattoos for the nation, you see. And a lot of family, Moorish Americans, and them got upset because they didn't understand what I was saying. But it's good that you pointed that out this evening that actually um, confirmed and rectified the situation for what I said previously from last week. So, you know, you have brothers and them saying black power, black power, black power. Yes, it is black power, but it's native power. So That's when right. you say you're mm-hmm. using, when you're using the black panther, understand what the Black Panther was used for, That's you see, right. because the Black Panther was also a nocturnal cat, you see, and it would sleep in the daytime in the trees, and you won't be able to see in the canopy in the trees or in the mountains. So right. with that, I see um, your cookie. All right, here I'll tell you what's to each. Thank you, Brother Noble Paul. Peace and love. Yeah. No doubt. I appreciate that because that was beautiful right there because yes, sir. You know, um, that's how simple it is, Washington. You can see actually a picture of the Empress holding a jaguar in her arms, um, you know, which that symbolizes holding Balam or Ish, which is the jaguar. So definitely, and of course, that's where the black jaguar comes from, which is the black panther as it comes known as. So de- thank you, Brother Noble Paul. Um Let's get into some of these declarations of rights of indigenous people because many don't know the rights in which that they possess because they still are happy being slaves. Yes, sir. Um, so we're not happy with that status. No. You know? So let's go to the articles. There's 46 of them in the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. I'm going to go over some of them, not every one. But Article 4 is important because it says indigenous people in exercising their right to self-determination have the right to autonomy or self-government. Once again, self-government in matters relating to their internal or local affairs, as well as ways and means for financing their autonomous functions. Article 6, every indigenous individual have the right to a nationality. We read earlier what a nationality is. That is your political status. (coughs) Right? Mm -hmm. Article 7. Indigenous individuals have the right to life, physical, and mental integrity, liberty, and security of people. Two. Indigenous people have the collective right to live in freedom, peace, security, as distinct people and shall not be subject to any act of genocide or any other act of violence, including forcible removal of children of groups um, to other groups. Now, that's something that we have to understand because there's a lot of um, brothers and sisters getting their children snatched out the home, and um, as indigenous people, that's not supposed to be happening. So we need our own governments in order to solidify this position. Now, indigenous people also says indigenous people and individuals, this is number nine, indigenous people and individuals have the right to belong to an indigenous community or nation. We're a Washington nation or the Empire Washington D. Dr. Munya and his first nation state, United Washington D. Dr. Munya, Moors, and it says here that indigenous people and individuals have the right to belong to an indigenous community or nation in accordance with the traditions and customs and the community and nations concerned. No discrimination of any kind may arise from the exercise of such a right. Right? Mm-hmm. Let's continue on. It says, number 12, indigenous people have the right to have, um, to have the right to manifest, practice, develop, and teach their spiritual and religious traditions, customs, and ceremonies the right to maintain, protect, and have access in in private uh, privacy to their religious and cultural sites, the right to use and control their ceremonial objects, and the right to repiate or or, um, 
repatriation of their human remains. Right? Right. Article 13. Indigenous people have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to future generations their history, languages, or traditions, philosophies, writing systems, and literature, and to designate and retain their own names for communities, places, and persons. Right? The state shall take effective measures to ensure that this right is protected and also to ensure that the indigenous people can understand and be understood in political, legal, and administrative processes when necessary, when necessary through the provisions of interpretation or by other appropriate means. Article 14, indigenous people have the right to establish and control their educational systems and institutions, provide education in their own language in a manner appropriate to the cultural methods of teaching and learning. All right, we go further. Let's come down. Article 18, indigenous people have the right to participate in decision making in matters which would affect their rights, their represent, uh, represent, uh, representatives chosen by themselves, so you have the right to have to choose your own representation in the court matters, in accordance with their own procedures, as well as to maintain and develop their own indigenous decision-making institutions. We go down, let's go further. Article 23, indigenous people have the right to determine and develop priorities and strategies for exercising their rights to development. In particular, indigenous people have the right to be active, active to be actively involved in developing and determining health, housing, and other economic and social programs affecting them and as far as possible to administrate such programs through their own institutions, right? Yeah. Article 24, indigenous people have the right to their traditional medicines and maintain their health practices, including the conservation of their vital municipal um, plants, animals, and minerals. Indigenous individuals have the right to access without any discrimination to all social and health services. Okay. It goes on, Article 25. Indigenous people have the right to maintain, strengthen their distinctive spiritual relationship with their traditionally owned and occupied, otherwise occupied, or used lands, territories, waters, and coastal seas, and other resources, and to uphold their responsibilities to future generations in this regard. All right? Now, Mm-hmm. Go to Article 28. Well, no, let's come on down. Well, there's so many. I don't want to read all of them, but I want everybody to get a gist of this. Let's go to Article 31. Indigenous people have the right to maintain, control, practice, and develop their cultural heritage, traditional knowledge, and traditional cultural expression, as well as the manifestations of their sciences, technologies, and cultures, including human and genetic resources, seeds, it means Bypass Monsanto, medicine, knowledge of the properties of fauna and flora, um, oral traditions, literature, designs, sports, and traditional games and visual and performing arts. They also have the right to maintain, control, protect, and develop their intellectual properties over such cultural heritage, traditional knowledge, and traditional cultural expression. That's right. Article 32, indigenous people have the right to determine and develop priorities and strategies for the development or the use of their lands or territories and other resources. Article 33, indigenous people have the right to determine their own identity or membership in accordance with their customs and traditions. This does not impair the right of individual, I mean, indigenous individuals to obtain citizenship of the states in which they live. They say of the United States, it says of the states, which actually are sovereign based on the Constitution from the United States, which actually is a foreign corporation, which is Washington, Mm -hmm. D.C., the District of Columbia. All right? So 
if we had dual citizenship, it would not be with the United States. All right, which is the 40 mile radius, it would be with the state itself, such as North Carolina, South Carolina, and so forth and so on. All right. Now, that's for those who might want to you know might, might want to know that answer to that particular question. Mm-hmm. Now, let's continue on. Article 37: Indigenous people have the right to the recognition, observation, and enforcement of treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements concluded with um, concluded with states or their successors, and to have state honor and respect such treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements. Now, of course, that's dealing with our documentation being put onto the public record in order to um, put people on notice about our particular status or standing. Now, let's continue on. Article 40, indigenous people have the right to access to and prompt decisions through just and fair procedures for the resolutions of conflict and disputes with states or other parties, as well as the effective remedy for all infringements of their individual or collective rights. Such decisions should give due consideration to the customs, traditions, rules, and legal systems of the indigenous people concerns and international human rights. So, um, once again, such decisions should be due consideration to the customs, traditions, rules, and legal Systems of the indigenous people concerning uh, concern and uh, international human rights. Um, Article 43, the rights recognized here constitute the minimum uh, standard for survival, dignity, and well-being of the indigenous people of the world. Article 44, all the rights and freedoms recognized herein are equally guaranteed to male and female indigenous individuals. Okay, so um, that is what's going on. I'm just reading some of them, and that's all. Um, all right, um, brother. Um, we have another caller here. Um, going right. to Eric 803. Eric 803, you're on the line. A zero three, you're on the line. Here they come. A zero three on the line. Peace. You hear me? Yes, we can. Brother. All right. Well, peace, uh, Doctor Lima, your co-host. All right. For the past couple of months, I've been asking myself. You know, that was the two. You you asked what I've been asking myself for the past couple of months. Like you know where I come from and how I can get control of my life. Because I realized I wasn't you know in total control one day when my told me that I can't, you know, go work closer to home than instead of being out of town, you know. Mm-hmm. I realized that I wasn't in control and I wanted to be able to make those own decisions. So me just calling in and listening to your show, it helped me, you know what I'm saying, come to a better understanding. I'm going to get the book so I can get more information on it, look into it, and I'll make sure I go to your website. But, you know, I just want to, you know, call in and express my, you know, my I appreciate you, brother, for calling in. And definitely, yes, of course, um, the website is www.drlimelbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-L-E-L-B-E-Y. That's drlimelbay.com. So anyone who knows my name, then just put doctor in front of the D-R-A-L-I-L-E-L-B-E-Y. And um, go to the website. You will see um, a tab. In which it has the section United Washington um, Deduct Ammonia History, as well as also United Washington Reclamation Process. Read those two and make your mind up on what you want to do if you want a nationality or do you want to continue being classified as a three fifth person, which is a subhuman by the Constitution. That's right. what this boils down to. That's what this boils down to. All right. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat. All 
Ms. L, you have anything you want to add on while I'm looking in the chat room here? Yes, uh, I. Uh, you write the uh, the need to uh, call your uh, the website and uh, get that also that book, the First World Order, and really find out, really you know, get involved in who you are, and uh, uh, that that'll erase a lot of confusion that you have about yourself and everything. You know, it'd be no doubt. When you get through studying those books, and uh, also we of the Washita, also that you had mentioned earlier, uh, if, if if it's still in print, I'm not sure it's still in print or not. Yeah, it's still in. Still in print. How, how much is that, brother? Um, I think it's about maybe fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars? Right, I believe so. It's around fifteen dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Okay. And also that one, and uh. And see about it, and then I'll make your mind up where they, make their minds up where they want to really uh, uh, do their nationality and everything, and uh, to get their processing papers, you know. Right. And it's it's whatever you know, it, it's worth it. It's worth everything, you know. Anything that dealing with uh, with your life, freedom, and pursuit of happiness is worth you know all the clothes, tennis shoes. The cars, the homes in the world. That's how I feel about it. Right. Well, if you're not recognized, I'm going to tell you what Malcolm said. Malcolm said that if you're not recognized as a human being, then everything in which that you went after as far as civil rights is for not. Right. In other words, civil rights has nothing, nothing, you know, is nothing if you do not have uh, human, human rights. rights. Not recognized as a human being. In other words, if you still recognize that a three fifth person as subhuman, you have no rights. You have no human rights. Therefore, no. the things in which that you think, you know, um, that you have purchased, which means the things in the world to you, such as your house, your car, so forth and so on, you don't have that. No. It's not, they can take that from you at any given time. Exactly. You know? And um, that's yeah. what this is about. You're acquiring real ownership. And then also being able to do it as the Rockefeller said, John D. Rockefeller in particular, that own everything but control nothing. You're right. And that you know, means uh, how, learning how to put things under a trust. Once you realize um, the estate, you put it under a trust, and then you also um, understand the science of allegiance, which is that corporation. So those are the three um, states. You have estate, trust, in Legion, you have to master those three particular um, levels. Um, yes, sir. Now, if not, then you are a pawn in the chess game called life. And right now, um, the white team is winning. Is winning. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it, 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 they want to stay with the Fourteenth Amendment or the Civil Rights deal. Dealing with the Fourteenth Amendment, then they're dealing with a fraud. They're dealing with a fiction. You know, something that's not real. Exactly. They think they have some, but they don't have it. Right. Until, until they get their human rights. Right. Exactly. And that's what Malcolm said, and that's even what um, Martin Luther King said. Martin, even Martin Luther King said that um, that we're moving beyond um, um, certain areas in the Constitution, and we're moving into human rights issues. Exactly. You know, so even Martin Luther King recognized that we're moving into human rights issues. And that's the key. We have to be recognized as human beings. You know, exactly. human beings have a nationality. A corporation, which is an in or artificial person, don't. That's why they can no. be classified as a three fifth person. Exactly. Because they're a corporation. Exactly. You know, not they're real. treated as such. You're not real. That's why you got the word colorable. In which that means appear to be real, but isn't. But isn't. That's what want to be. That's the definition of the word colored. That's why in the 1930s, you was recognized as being colored. W.E.B. Du right. Bois popularized the word colored amongst the so-called black people. in W.A.C.P. National Advancement Association of Colored People. <laughs> Advanced to where? 
exactly. where where they are advancing to and their color, well, their people of color. Well, they're they're crayons. In, in trying to advance to the boule level, which is, means um, advisors to the kings. They wanted to be the advisors or the bougie Negro League of the rock of the Rockefellers. Exactly, serve still servants, right of the European Empire, right getting close so, from the master's table. That's what no. they want, and that's what they have to look at. They have what we call an illusion of power, right? right. Something they don't have, right? No, exactly. Three fifths of a human being. You yep. carrying the names of the European slave masters. Mm-hmm. You, but you are you you you, get, you admit that you are you are admitting that you are their property. Big Every hope. time you use the hold name up, Harry Ooh. Williams. Oh hold, hold 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 up, brother! You got to slow that down. Say that one okay. more time. Okay. Say one more time, brother. Their their property is that. This is their property. Is that chattel property? Mm-hmm. And is it that the word chattel is a nice little French word for the word cattle? Yes. So we know exactly. that cattle is property. And therefore, if you're being led like sheep to the slaughter or cattle exactly. to the slaughter, you're chattel property. Hence, three fifth human being. Three fifth long. Right. So you're three fifth person by Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution. And people are happy with that. It's called the three fifth compromise. And that's what George Bush was able to use in order to win against Al Gore in the Democratic or the uh, Republican um, election in um, 1996. Right. They were voted in Right. Well, in 1992, actually, he was able to, um, was that, 1992? What was that, 1996? What was that? Yeah, 1996, wasn't it? When the, um, yeah, then you had the 2000s. Yeah, 2000, no, it was 2000, wasn't it? Yes. The 2000 election, that's when it was. Thank you, I got to get it right. Mm-hmm. 2000 election, George Bush, Al Gore. Everyone knows that Al Gore won the popular vote, but the collegiate or the college vote was won by George Bush. Exactly. The presidency. He's able to use the three-fifth compromise, meaning he was able to say, well, the so-called Negroes, it's only three-fifths person. So, therefore, we're only going to count these votes as three-fifths. They're not counted. Right. They're so not therefore, real people. Right. So, therefore, two-fifths of the counts were hidden. Ballots was found in, in attics, in basements, all over the place. Because, based on the three-fifths compromise, Negroes are only three-fifths persons. Exactly. Well, he used the Constitution. And Against won. Him. Right. And won. <laughs> big time. Right. Big time. <clears throat> because we know that every 25 years, the Constitution must be the um the voting bill, right? Or voting bill act, as it is called. It's not a right. It's an act. It's a bill. I mean, somebody got to pay that bill now. It has to be signed every 25 years by the President of the United States. Of course, it was Lyndon B. Johnson in 1962. Um, 25 years later, 18, um, 1982, by Ronald Reagan. Exactly, that's right. right. Um, George Bush, who stole the election, put it back in also. Mm-hmm. He signed it. Before he got out, all right, before 2008, before Obama mm-hmm. came in, okay, he signed it. Mm-hmm. Right? I, exactly. think about, I think that was just a year right before he got out. In 2007, he just signed it. Right. Mm-hmm. 25 years so they can vote. You there, brother? Dr. Aline? Hmm.
um, the, the, the particular, name. right, the various names of individuals and how they want to continue having the last names, the surnames of these Albions, the Europeans, um, in which that sometimes these names will actually change just slightly or modified into what becomes an English transliterated name, but they mm-hmm. might still have ancestral roots. Because you'll find out that a lot of words in which that are still used today in the English language actually are met, is met to met to. For mm. example, mm. the word mother is actually an Egyptian word. It's from the word mut is ra. Mut ra. A mut hair. Mut hair. M U T H E R is mother. M O T H E R. So moot hair, which means moot, which is the word moot or primordial water of life, and the word hair is short for hair root, which means light. So the primordial mm. root and light. So the word mother means the primordial waters and light. In other words, we are in her waters as the original navigators of moors, inside of her waters, which is the, um, the embryonic fluid that we are in for nine months before the water breaks and we are brought to shore on the banks of a vaginal canal. You see that? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important That's to study right. etymology of words. Exactly. exactly. The word father comes from the word putara or putar here. All right? Once again, S-A-T-H-E-R it will be T um, T T A H E R or R A. Alright, so Patara or Patahe. So this is where these particular words come from. So we are using English transliterations of Egyptian words, mention that word. The mm-hmm. word cousin comes from the word consu. K H O N S U. C O U S I N. Kansu, we get the word from cousin. Kansu um, symbolizes um, a form of Heru. Right? Mm. It symbolizes the son. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and her Heru symbolizes the daughter. So, um, the word aunt, all right, which is spelled ant, A N T, is where we get the word loose. N U T or A N U T, A N U T, which is the word aunt. So that is where we get the word um, aunt from the word anut or mm-hmm. anut. Right? We just spell A U N T and anut or anut is spelled A N U T. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, which, means the, which means the sky goddess. So a lot of the names in which that we have are actually um, names in which that are appear to be English, but that was language, but they actually have intercomedic roots or Arabic or Hebrew roots because the Cherokee, as known as the Emawa, or also referred to as the Kitawa, also known as the Chickakoi or Iroquois, um, that is the name in which that they was called um, in history, you know, that is the name in which that um, was English or modified, you know. So go back and check these particular names. Now, we know that the Ultima Empire, which is the Songhai Empire, which is the uh, Malian Empire, which is all the Moroccan Empire or the Washington Empire, as we made mention of earlier, all of this is the same thing. In the Ultima Empire, the last names in which that is documented as the landowners was El, Bey, Day, Al, and Ali. Mm. And those five names correlate to the five civilized tribes, Cherokee, Choctaw, Seminole, Creek, and Mus- which is Muscogee, and Seminole. Mm-hmm. You know, so these are the particular um, names, you know, so 
I'm going to end it there, Brother L. Well, we got two minutes left. Any closing remarks before we go? Yes, sir. Uh, I know I've been saying it for the longest. Uh, I'm get that uh, the picture I told you about by my great great grandmother, which is a Choctaw, right, uh, of the Choctaw Tribal Nation. Uh, this right. is storage, so I'm gonna have to get it out as, as soon as no possible. Doubt. I'm gonna take a picture of me with my fares on, standing by the picture, and I'm gonna send it to you. All right, brother. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right. That means sir. brother L. Who the Grand Sheik is also Washington, which is talked to her by birth. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so we're getting ready to head out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. 